organize it. <clears throat> so then the question is, okay, we want to make this bot communication more useful, more practical. Uh, how do we how, how do we stretch it so it doesn't uh, it's like a communication like with the strings and the and the cans, which is nice, but can't go too far. And, and actually, so what we would like to have is a global network. So there are two main approaches to achieving this. So one is there are ways to do quantum repeaters on the ground, but they are very advanced and, and even now it's still in the in the, um, in the fundamental stage. And, and what they require essentially is to build a quantum memory, so a, a system where photos can be stored and, and emitted at a later time, and their quantum state can be preserved. And so this is a very challenging uh, um, direction here, but, but there recently there have been important uh, results in this time, so, but still it's, it's, it's quite a bit far away. And the other way uh, to, to achieve this is to use satellites. So, to go to go to satellites um, uh, has has some very nice advantages. Essentially, the, the atmosphere is very thin. So as soon as you go like um, out of the atmosphere, maybe 10, 20 kilometers, it gets very thin, and then in vacuum, of course, the photons can propagate freely. So there's no absorption, no um, no turbulence. And so, on. so for instance, if a satellite is like thousands of kilometers high and you send photons down, they will just propagate in empty space without any, any absorption or disruption and only the last few kilometers that's in atmosphere. And so with such concepts, uh, those distances we would like to see are feasible. And it turns out by, by uh, that uh, in particular by using low Earth orbit satellites that, that it's, it's, it's actually very feasible with today's technology. So meaning, um, using uh, equipment we have in the lab or the, and the kind of performance we have in the lab, it's feasible to, to think of having a source, for instance, of both the ISS or another low Earth, um, a LEO satellite, and, and with that one could do entanglement experiments over maybe a thousand kilometers or, or of those uh, quantum key distributions, and, and I'd like to already point out that, that this is already under investigation and a lot of studies have been done. So, for instance, the ESA in Europe is, is pursuing this uh, mainly to the concept of putting a payload onto the space, International Space Station, and, and now uh, more and more momentum is picking up here in Canada, so there's already a lot of to get. Uh, to study this. So, um, so what kind of mission scenarios can we consider? Uh, <clears throat> if we if we want to set such satellite transmissions, there are like three basic or main uh, concepts. So if one has an entangled photon source for the satellite, one can send two photons down to different ground stations. Or if one has a satellite, and so one satellite, one can send the beam down to one ground station. Uh, or simply just send the photos from ground to space. That's the other third kind of possibility. Although those two, of course, can go together. Or one can even think of a system which can do both up and down. And, and each of them has their own uh, their own uh, differences. Of course, having an entangled photo source on board a satellite would be the, the ideal case because then one can do scientific experiments as well as, as application-oriented experiments. And uh, for instance, just just a simple source of a satellite, like a sort of faint laser source, which simulates single photons by, by dipping a laser pulse down to a single photon level. Um, that is, for instance, suitable for doing quantum photography experiments or systems. And uh, interestingly, that's, that's a direction I like very much. If we would think of putting a receiver, a quantum receiver into space, so we would have the source on the ground. They wanted to think of doing all kind of um, uh, nice scientific experiments as well as just quantum photography experiments, simply because the, the complex source is kept on the ground in a lab. So that can be, um, uh, be a very interesting scenario. So what are we studying here in Canada already is um, 
to, so we, we've, we've done collaboration with the space agency and this uh, Comdef in, in Cambridge and um, uh, with IMO and DRDC of how to uh, how to come up with a content maybe for a micro satellite. So um, just to, to study what what kind of um, hardware would one need, sources, detectors, and so on, mission content, and so on. How will that work uh, in order to, to have a satellite orbiting the Earth and, and, and creating keys between the satellite and ground, uh, and, and then connecting up several ground stations um, dispersed anywhere around the planet. And, and that's a very nice um, <coughs> project, uh, uh, which, which is just recently emerged and is, is now in, um, in full moon, I should say. <laughs> Under full progress, and, and it's very nice. Also, in the, at the same time, in the lab, we, we were working already on proof of concept experiments at the same time to study uh, those ideas, for in particular of, of doing the uplink, which I mentioned, just to demonstrate um, with, with lab hardware it can be done. Um, there is another. Uh, issue one has to think about when going to, to the atmosphere. There is this. Uh, so this is these are transmission versus um, uh, wavelengths of photons. So down here that we have the, the UV cutoff in the atmosphere, and, and, the, and these are nanometers. So here is around thousand nanometer. Five hundred nanometer here would be the green, and and uh, if we would go further, we can think of going to. Maybe some micrometers. 1.5 micrometer, by the way, is where telecom systems are. Uh, typically, that's around here, so that goes to be a suitable way. But I already cut the, the, short, the story too short. Um, uh, so we are considering in all of our systems to work in the range of 500 to 800 nanometers, so that's around here, in the, in the kind of optical spectrum, where the transmission and absorption atmosphere is. is um, Still quite good, but one has the benefit of, of lower diffraction and as well as um, uh, good detection. So, what kind of beam diffraction does one expect when, when one sends those photon beams down? Essentially, it, it's, it's simple optics, it's nothing quantum there. One just has, one can consider having like a, a well defined optical mode, like a laser beam, starting off from a telescope. A few centimeters, and then um, due to normal essentially diffraction, this beam will get wider and wider as it propagates in space. And so at the receiver, we will just have a certain spot diameter. And this has to be um, tuned in such a way that we can work in a, a, a regime of, of losses where we can still, we can still handle. It. So, for instance, if we think of having a, a 15 centimeter telescope up there and a one meter telescope on the ground. Uh, roughly, the, the kind of losses are for a thousand kilometer distance, simply with the geometric, only with this geometric effect, uh, around 20 dB, meaning um, one percent. So one percent of the photons make it through. That's roughly the regime. So it's actually not that, not that bad. This corresponds 20 dB corresponds to uh, interestingly about 100 kilometers of optical fiber. So. And there are other things to come.